Great. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to be talking about water. Not all the water on our blue planet, but about fresh water. And not all fresh water, but groundwater is going to be the focus of what I'll be talking about. We can see fresh water stored as surface water in our lakes, our reservoirs, and our rivers. What we can't see is the water that's stored underground as groundwater in the openings, in the rocks, and the sediments, in large regions referred to as groundwater aquifers. But we use a lot of this groundwater, even though we can't see it. 44% of the fresh water used in the United States is groundwater. In California, that number is 30%, and I looked up the number for Sacramento County when I was coming here. 44% of your fresh water is groundwater. And these are the numbers in a typical year. In times of drought, that's when our groundwater becomes very important. And what happens in a drought, this number doubles in California. We get 60% of our fresh water from groundwater. In times of drought, when we can see the levels in our reservoirs going down, we turn to groundwater, where we store and save a large volume of water. I often say groundwater is like our freshwater savings account. And so what do we need to do? We need to effectively manage our groundwater aquifers. What's the most important thing we can do in terms of management of our groundwater? It's the most important thing you should do in terms of the management of your savings account. Figure out how much is there and monitor what the balance is. What's happening in terms of the amount of water that we have stay saved in our groundwater aquifers? So how do we typically make those measurements? Typically by drilling wells. But wells give us information at one location, very useful, but we can never get the spatial and temporal density of sampling that we truly need to adequately characterize and therefore manage our groundwater aquifers. What do we have now? We have medical imaging to see inside people, to image inside humans, to manage human health. My passion is seeing into Earth, imaging our groundwater aquifers to manage our groundwater resources. And we can do this using geophysical imaging methods, where we deploy sensors on the ground surface, or in helicopters, or in satellites. And we use these sensors to get images of what's happening in our groundwater aquifers. So I'm going to talk about a research project we've been involved with for the past five years now, and it's using an imaging method to address a groundwater management challenge in the San Luis Valley, which is just north of the Colorado-New Mexico border. This is a high altitude valley. You can see it's a desert climate, but you can also see extensive agriculture, which means irrigation, which means demands on the groundwater resources. So this project has been a collaboration between the team of people I work with at Stanford and Willem Schroeder, who's a hydrologist in the San Luis Valley, who is charged with the challenge of managing groundwater in this valley. I always say I like working with real people in real places with real problems. Well, Will Willem has a real problem. And what we're trying to do is demonstrate how some of the methods we're developing at Stanford can actually be used in practice for groundwater management. Agriculture in the San Luis Valley is an integral part of the local economy, and it's completely dependent upon pumping of groundwater. The water is pumped from what's referred to as the confined aquifer, about 100 meters below the surface. The goal in the San Luis Valley, the goal in many places, is sustainable management of the groundwater aquifer so that we don't deplete the groundwater, and then we have a serious problem. In order to manage, as I said earlier, one of the most important things we need to know is how much is there. So the required measurement is a measurement of head. Head is simply the level to which the water rises in a well. So we need these head measurements to figure out how much water we have. And we need these head measurements both over time and space to give us baseline data so that we can understand how the groundwater system operates in this area. And then we need to be monitoring, constantly monitoring, how much water we're taking out of our aquifer. These measurements can be made in wells. But the challenge in the San Luis Valley, ideally we'd like these measurements once a month, about every 100 meters, over 6,000 square kilometers. Well, you're never going to do that with drilling wells. So what we started asking is, how can we image this aquifer? What kind of imaging technology do we have that could let us understand and monitor head levels in this aquifer? And what we've utilized is a well-known relationship between what's happening in the aquifer, the head level, and what's happening at the ground surface. Very simply, when you pump, 
the head level drops, say on the order of meters, and what happens at the ground surface? As you pull this water out, David showed a great picture of a telephone pole, subsidence, subsidence on the order of millimeters to centimeters. Then what happens in the San Luis Valley, winter precipitation, rainfall and snow melt, we get what's referred to as recharge of the aquifer. The head level goes up, the surface goes back up on the order of millimeters to centimeters. So if we can monitor what's happening at the ground surface, we can monitor what's happening in our aquifer. And there is an imaging method, a satellite, that can give us that information. INSAR, a satellite that's been making measurements all over the globe since 1992, mapping out deformation once a month with spatial sampling on the order of tens to hundreds of meters. And the most amazing fact, with an accuracy of millimeters to centimeters. Can you believe it from a satellite detecting that kind of change in deformation? So we immediately wanted to use INSAR in the San Luis Valley. This is the data coverage we had, good coverage over the San Luis Valley, but we had a challenge. And this is the reason people haven't previously used this technology in agricultural areas. The challenge was the crops that were growing. Here we are trying to detect this subtle change in deformation, and you have crops growing like this. Well, this was the topic of Jessica Reeves' PhD thesis, and this was one of the first images she had. This is data quality. Blue is bad. This is not a great way to start your PhD thesis. <laughs> so doesn't look like we've got great data quality, but when you zoom in, what you see is this regular <laughs> pattern, this pattern where we've got very high quality data. And if you overlay a Google Earth image, what do we find? It's the gaps between the irrigated circles of the center pivot irrigation system. So there were gaps there where no crops were growing, where we could use INSAR to see into the underlying groundwater aquifer. So this ended up being tremendously successful. And what I'm showing here is a plot of head measurements from 1992 to 2011, where by calibrating at the well, we were able to get excellent agreement between the measurements in the wells, the blue dots, directly measuring head levels, and what we were able to do, the red dots, with our satellite data. This allows us to fill in time gaps in our sampling at the wells, and it allows us, if you'll notice, to go back in time. Prior to 1998, there was no well there. Well, we can't send someone back in time to drill a well and make a measurement, but our satellite has been acquiring data since 1992, so we can fill in the time spaces that we need. What we're now doing is we want to do this over the entire San Luis Valley. And this is an image, high quality INSAR data using advanced data processing and analysis techniques. We can now get an image over the entire San Luis Valley. And what you're looking at is an image of the subsidence during summer pumping. Blue means the ground is going up, not likely during summer pumping. Red is the ground is going down. And you can see that we have areas where we have maximum subsidence on the order of about 10 centimeters. But this is an amazing image. We can actually see the spatial pattern where the groundwater level is changing far beneath the ground surface. And we're in the process of converting this into head levels. If we look at winter recharge, we get uplift. The blue tells us we're getting uplift. And the interesting thing in the San Luis Valley, we get uplift on the order of 10 centimeters. So it's actually very interesting. In the San Luis Valley, we actually has a, have a system that's fairly balanced. The water coming out in the summer is replaced in the winter. So I'm going to finish by looking at an example in California where we've just recently started working with colleagues at JPL, and that's in the Central Valley of California. What we see in the INSAR image is the subsidence that's occurring because of continued pumping. So we're going to be in the Fresno, Hanford region. And here are the INSAR data. Blue, we're looking at subsidence between 2007 and 2011. Blue, pretty stable. Any groundwater pumping is not causing subsidence. But the red area, that area is going down 15 centimeters a year. So 60 centimeters in four years. 1.1 1 and a half meters in 10 years. And the challenge here, it's not just of concern in terms of the amount of groundwater that we've taken out, but we are getting irreversible compaction of the aquifer so that we can't fill it back up again. And what's happening at the ground surface? Impact on infrastructure, our buildings, our roads, our bridges, our aqueducts that carry our water. And then I couldn't be here today without an image from um, Sacramento. So this is what's happening right below you. 
looking at subsidence that has occurred between 2007 and 2011. Different scale, instead of going down at 15 centimeters a year, it's 1.5 centimeters a year. So you're relatively stable around here. But isn't it interesting to see the kind of spatial variation going on in terms of pumping? I don't know what's happening in Elk Grove, but there's water being pumped beneath Elk Grove. So I'll leave you today with thinking about imaging our groundwater aquifers. I've talked about one imaging method. There are many others. Medical imaging has revolutionized the approach to human health. I believe that imaging our groundwater aquifers should be used as a way to revolutionize our approach to freshwater management. Thanks very much.